Good afternoon, traders and investors. Will back here with another one. Hope everybody had a beautiful weekend. So it's that time of the week again, guys, where I share my top five options plays for the upcoming week in the stock market. So what we're going to be covering today, guys, is last week's trades. Do a quick recap of those. They all, for the most part, went extremely well. And then obviously give you guys the top five plays for the week. Now, what are these options plays exactly? Well, more specifically, guys, on the channel, we run the put wheel strategy, meaning we are looking to sell, aka write puts on designated stocks at specific stock, at specific strike prices, usually around heavy areas of support in hopes of those contracts ending worthless, which means that all of that juicy premium ends up in our pocket by the end of the week. The reason we write weekly puts and not something like 30 or 45 days out is just because it provides the best annualized ROI as a whole. So with all that being said, guys, let's get right into today's video. So in terms of how the market is set up, I usually do these daily market recaps every single day, Monday through Friday. But how we're kind of looking out for the markets here, guys, is we're very, very nicely trending right now. Early on in the week, as we potentially approach the top end of the trend line, you could be expecting potentially a slight little pullback on Monday and Tuesday. And that is exactly where we want to make some of these plays on options. We want to be writing them on down days. Now let's take a look at some of the strategy rules before we get into last week's plays. Very, very, very simple strategy as a whole, guys. Number one, you want to be writing puts on a solid company, preferably a company that you know. Please, nobody go writing puts on a, on a company that you don't know anything about. It just makes managing the position extremely difficult if ever you are assigned. Now, being assigned is not a bad thing because then we get to generate even more premium writing covered calls. So managing the position will be key. And to manage it properly, you want to have a stock that you do not mind owning. So please don't go writing puts on no name companies or in companies that you know nothing about just because the premium is good, not a very good. Uh, this is pretty much rule number one for the strategy, guys. Extremely important rule, often overlooked because sometimes the premium on um, lesser known companies or very, very volatile companies can be very attractive, can lure you in. But obviously, guys, the market makers do that for a reason. If you end up trapped thereafter, managing the position is just a bit complicated. Number two, we want to be writing on red or flat days. This just increases our probabilities of ending the week with premium in our pocket. If the expected move of a stock up or down is about 5% in any given week, and on a Monday or Tuesday, the stock goes down 3% already, well, you know you have an additional buffer to the downside that you can dip into in writing lower and lower strike prices, guys. It just increases increases the probabilities of us winning trades. Now, keep in mind, the way I run this strategy, already 90 to 95% of all trades will be winning trades. So we want to put all the odds in our favor. Number three, the stock needs to be in a monthly uptrend or at least a long-term range. You'll see that pretty much all of the picks that I always choose are fulfilling one of these two conditions. You don't want to get into a stock it's in a long-term downtrend with no bottom in sight. We need to have some market support. Now, number four, please never write any, any uh, puts on companies that have earnings this week. You guys know how volatile earnings can be, and it just makes for a bit of a challenging position to manage. If ever you write uh, a put on a stock, let's say 5% away from the current price, and then on earnings, it has a surprise of the downside, 15, 20%. Well, you're gonna start off that position heavily in the red, and it could have been avoided if you just did not play earnings. Earnings, around earnings, premiums get jacked up by market makers, and it makes it extremely attractive to make some fairly risky plays. But in my experience, guys, it's not worth it unless you're playing earnings extremely conservative like I do sometimes. But still, rule number one is I never recommend anybody else to be making earnings plays. The strategy is much simpler if you just stick to these rules. Now, number five, we need want to be writing uh, these puts at a support area or a breakout retest area. Support area, you'll see that most of the plays that I'm picking are in big areas of support. A breakout retest, I always bring up the same chart, guys. Just take a look at Autodesk. So Autodesk was in this big, big, big area of consolidation. Top end of the range was about at 230. Then we had this beautiful weekly uptrend breakout of the zone retest the top end of the zone and then run. This retest area is an extremely high probability trade, the same as if you were to trade the lower end of support down here. So that's the difference between the two, the support versus the breakout retest. Now, 
Uh, point number six, we want to be writing 0.5 to 1% in weekly premium, which means if a stock is trading at a, if your stock is trading at $100 and you want to write puts at, let's say, 95, you need to see between 45 and about 90 cents on the bid. That is about half a percent to 1% per week. The math is extremely simple, guys. Just do half of the strike price in cent increments. So to give you guys a numerical example. Let's say you want to write, uh, let's make it easy, right? You want to write puts at $100. Well, you want to see roughly 0.5 divided by 100. That's what you want to see on the bid, 0.5. So 50 cents on the bid when you're looking for puts. It gives you about half a percent per week. And that's exactly what we want, guys. It is the sweet spot. Options is largely uh, an art form because there is a lot of math, but a lot of it is just trial and error. And over the years, this has become my sweet spot whereby a lot, a lot, a lot of the trades that we take just end up winning 90, 95% win rate in terms of our success ratio. And still yet we make a decent amount of money, guys. If you're making between half a percent to 1% per week, if you do the math on an annualized basis, guys, that's between 26 and 52% ROI per year if you're running the strategy consistently. So very, very decent uh, area to be writing in. Just go with this rule. It's the rule that I've been using for years now. Then before last, we want to write at or lower than the expected move here, guys. So this is extremely important just because the market makers give us a designated expected move uh, to the upside and to the downside. If you don't know what the expected move on a stock is, you can always go uh, to this free website right here, optionsai.com, not sponsored by me and everything. So here you see I have Johnson & Johnson pulled up and it gives you the expected move for the week. You can see here to the upside and to the downside, we always wanna be writing below the expected move. Once again, it just adds probabilities in our favor that if the stock does move below the expected move, we could be expecting a bounce, right? Back into the expected move to the upside. So whenever we're trying to write puts, we always wanna be targeting towards the lower end of that expected move, just increases our profitability. And then lastly, take profit at 90% of the contract value. Because this strategy is so hands-off, guys, and it only takes about 10, 15 minutes of your day to find these plays, you're probably not gonna be sitting at your computer for seven, eight hours a day for the most part. So you always wanna be setting a take profit on the contracts at about 90% uh, of their value, right? So if you write a put for a dollar, let's say, you wanna put a buy limit order back on that put for about 10 cents, just makes things easier if you're not at your computer those contracts can just automatically take profit. So with all that being said, guys, very, very easy strategy. Let's take a look at last week's plays and we're gonna start it off with a good one, which was Apple. So Apple last week, what were we looking for? We were looking for Apple in the 180 and the 177.50 range. So Apple, unfortunately, unless it's a monthly contract, Usually they trade in about two and a half dollar increments. So the only strikes available available were the 180s or the 177.50s. I'll show you that on the chain right now. You can see here, right, $2.50 increments. So we were either going for the 180s or the 177.50s, both actually, which became available early on in the week. So here is the Monday trading candle. You can see we opened and came down roughly to about 181. Now, I personally wrote the 180s and actually I was assigned because the stock did close below the 180 mark. So I'll take, take a look at my portfolio here. You will see that indeed I now do have 100 shares of Apple at $180, but I did get a very nice credit for them. You can see that right here. We wrote the 180s on Monday for about a dollar four. So respecting our half a percent rule, half a percent would have been 90 cents. We got a bit over that. But on Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, as a matter of fact, you could have even got even lower as it spiked down into the 180 range. The 177.50s actually did become available. They were trading at roughly 80, 85 cents on the bid at that point. So it could have been a very juicy trading opportunity. Now, for the 180s, I will be writing covered calls and you can see the covered call premiums for this week at my designated strike price for 180, the covered calls are currently trading at about $1.85, $1.87, well over our 1% rule. So that is very, very juicy, guys. I'm expecting a nice little bounce on Apple. And if ever it stays below, we'll just continue writing covered calls and generating that juicy premium. Apple still one of my favorite stocks to be writing puts on as it challenges the 180 to 170 zone. So that one was very good. If you got assigned, 
Do not worry, it's Apple. You know what you're holding, guys. Nobody should be nervous about being assigned some shares of Apple. If anything, it's a very beautiful gift from the market makers to allow us to get a 10% discount on such a great stock. Now, stock number two we were looking at was Google. So Google, we were looking at anywhere between the 140 to 138. 140 to 138 was this big area of resistance, which then turned into support and is still currently acting as support. So Google, you see, closed the week at about 138.08. So we were looking for 140 to 138 as close as possible. Last week, I put a big emphasis on we were looking to get as close as possible to 138. So I actually ended up writing the 138 myself on the Monday session here. So you can see down here, 138 Google puts, and we opened them for about 91 cents. Now I was able to close them lower, later on in the week because I wanted to make some other plays. And you can see we closed these for about 23 cents, but if you would have rode them into the Friday session, they would have ended worthless anyway. So Google was a very good trade and will be featured in this week's video as well. We're gonna be looking a little bit lower. If ever guys, anybody got assigned on Google, once again, you know what you're holding. It's Google, they're extremely attractively valued valued at this point. Forward PE is about a 20 a legacy company, nothing bad for them uh, to say about them. They've just been struggling with negative media headlines in terms of their newer AI rollout in terms of their Genesis, uh, their Gemini product, but something really not, uh, you know, it's not that big of a factor for the long term, in my opinion. So I'm still very, very uh, attracted to writing some Google puts even below the 138 level uh, coming into this current week. And if for every which reason, guys, you got a sign at 139, let's say you went with the 139s or something like that, the premium on these uh, covered calls for the week is good enough, right? So you would probably got already a dollar for being assigned at 139. So your break even might even be at 138 currently and look at the covered calls for Google uh, in terms of this week right you take a look at the 139s they're trading at about 135 140 so you get an extra dollar in some uh, change and even if you got assigned a bit higher here at the 140s you can see the premium is still pretty good trading at roughly a dollar and any bounce is going to go in our direction as well uh, so that's very very good for Google so quite happy with how this play traded uh, last week. But if ever, once again, if ever you got a sign on Apple or Google, I wouldn't be too nervous at all. They're very, very close to our previous strike prices. The covered call premium is very good and the companies are extremely solid and both in long-term uptrends as well. Now, the third company we were looking at guys was Tesla. So unfortunately, Tesla last week was a no trade. Tesla, we were looking for a little bit of a dip here uh, down from about 191 into the 180s because what we wanted to do is we wanted to get as close as possible to 175, 170. Now, Tesla, I love trading it between 180 to 170, but unfortunately last week, as of the Monday session, you can see we had a nice green day, 4% to the upside, and Tesla really never looked back towards the lower levels all week. So unfortunately, no trade on that, but I would keep this on a somewhat of a back burner watch list just to have it out there. If Tesla does start retesting these lower 190 levels, I love Tesla guys in the 180 to 170 level moving forward in the future. So I would keep this on the watch list if you are running this strategy. If we do dip down there, could be a great trade for the future. But unfortunately, last week, no trade at all since the stock moved higher. And the closest you could get for the most premium was about the 190s. And that's a little bit too high for me, in my opinion. I really want to get down below to the 170s, 180s, which is far, far, far a better area of support. Now, the next trade that we took last week was Caesars. So Caesars has been featured on the channel now for a couple weeks running. Why? Because it's in such a beautiful area of support, guys. This is two years worth of support almost at this point, down in the lower 40 to $38 range. Now, this is another one that I picked up myself. So you can see right here, we wrote the Caesars 39.5s on Monday because we had a very decent little uh, dip earlier on in the Monday session, and which even came into the Tuesday session as well, dipping into the mid $42 range, which did open up either the 40s or the 39.5s. So I went with the 39.5s, as you can see right here, in Monday afternoon at about 1.47 in the afternoon, and we got about 28 cents for those. So just over half a percent, pretty much. If you want to do the math, 0.28 divided by your strike, 39. 9.5, you can see that's about 0.7% on the week. So very happy with the Caesars trade. Caesars was able to close it uh, pretty much midway through the week here for about nine cents. I was looking to take another earnings play after that. So I kind of closed the contract, but if you would have held it to maturity, you can see that Caesars ended nicely above our 39.5. So that was a beautiful trade, whether you took the 40, the 40 strike, the 39.5 strike, both were available and both were a very good trade. Indeed, everything moving in the right direction, premium 
uh, really uh, coming worthless here by pretty much end of Wednesday into Thursday as well. So very, very good trade on Caesars. And the last one we were looking out for, guys, is Palantir. So Palantir, we wanted to have a little bit of a retest of this lower support range talking about $21, $20. This is the breakout retest trade. We're breaking out currently of the area we were stuck in for our 52-week highs. We now broke into a new zone of trading and we were looking for the retest of the zone. But unfortunately, Palantir, as of Monday on the open, you can see just pretty much skyrocketed to the upside all week. So really, we were looking for the pullback into here. I was looking for about 21 all the way down to $20 strikes. But unfortunately, the premium never really got there for us, guys. So it was a no trade on Palantir. The idea was good. The only thing is that the stock just moved higher and we don't want to be chasing. We want to be waiting for plays to come to us in our direction. So no play on Palantir specifically. So those were pretty much the past uh, week's five trades, all of which did very, very good. A couple could have been assigned depending on your strike price, such as Apple as Google. But hopefully I've shown that that's really not big of a deal, guys. You're getting them at very decent support levels. You're also getting them in decent covered call territory as well. So you should be able to continuously bring down your cost basis. And then eventually, when Apple and Google undoubtedly recapture the levels to the upside, you are going to be making some very juicy returns. Just keep in mind, guys, as long as you're making 0.5 to 1% per week on these covered calls, everything is amazing. So you're beating the market pretty much on an average year. So all that being said, guys, now let's get into this week's top five plays. And at the end, what I didn't do last week is I was supposed to give you guys some bonus names that I just keep on the side on a watch list if ever they fall into this level. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the top five plays, and then I'm going to give you guys a bunch of bonus plays that you can put on the side in a watch list to watch the levels if ever they come down, because those are the ones that I'm most likely looking at here in the foreseeable future. So the first play for this week is once again going to be Apple. So just don't be surprised, guys, if a few of these names are recurring on a week to week basis. It's normal. As long as they're still in our overall support areas, I will continue to play them every single week because that's what we're looking for. We want the market to come to us. And then when it comes to us, we want to be milking these things for all the premium that we can possibly get. So Apple, once again, now that we're trading under the 180 mark, we want to be going a little bit lower here, guys. So the expected move, I apologize that I don't have it on my chart, but we're going to do these together. So the expected move on Apple for this coming week is about 176.35. So we want to be getting premium below 176.35. What does that mean? Well, we need to be targeting probably 175 strike on Apple. So if we take a look at their uh, at the Apple contracts here for the upcoming week, let's take a look. Can we get some premium at 175? As you can see right now, only 46 cents. What we need to see on this, guys, is about 90 cents for it to be worth it. 85, 90 cents. And you can see we only really get that if we do the 177.50s. 177.50s is a little bit close. I wouldn't be opposed to doing them myself, but if you're a bit more conservative, we might be looking for a little bit of a dip on Apple on Monday. If Apple has a little bit of a dip on Monday down into the 178, even maybe high 177 region, that will definitely open up the 175 strike on Apple. It is still well, well, well within our big, big, big area of support. This whole area of support, guys, it's previous all-time highs. It's the September, October of last year consolidation area. So I do expect the bulls to be putting up some pretty good support here in the mid-170 zone. So... If you're an aggressive bull, you may be looking to play, play the 177.50s. I personally wouldn't mind just because it's Apple. I'm really not nervous about the company. But if you're a little bit more conservative, you could wait for that little dip opportunity early on in the week, Monday or Tuesday. If it dips down, as I said, 178 or high 177s, like 177.80, 177.90, that will probably open up the 175 contract for about half a percent. So take a look at Apple for that. Now, the second play we're going to be looking at is once again Google. Why? Because it's still within our area of support. Yes, it's bouncing at the lower end of our support range, but we do have a beautiful area of support coming up. There's just support all over this zone for Google. More specifically, look, take a look, guys, at the 134, 135 is the next big one upcoming. You can see this green line here is your 200-day moving average as well. So if Google continues this little bit of a slide this week into the 137, 136 mark, you should be probably looking for the one. Uh, 35 strike or better, right? So let's take a look at the expected move on Google and see if our expected move does corroborate with that. 
So taking a look at Google here, you can see the expected move is about 135.20, as we were saying, right? Target the 135s. So 135 would be below the expected move ever so slightly, but still below. Now let's take a look at some of the premium that they have at the 135s currently. Currently, Google 138, probably not gonna be high enough it's right, it's not high enough. You would like to see about 75 cents on this one for it to be worth it. So far, it's only offering that at about the 136 strike. So if Google has a little bit of a sell-off here on Monday, down to maybe the 137, 136, we wanna be going as low as possible while still respecting our half a percent rule. So if you can find half a percent at the 134s on a little drop, that would be great, guys. As low as possible on a dip while still being below this expected move of 135 is going to be an absolutely amazing trade on Google. Personally, myself, even though even though uh, I've been playing the 138s, this week I'll be looking to aggressively play most likely the 136, 135 strike personally. So keep an eye out on Google. Extremely good purchase in this area, in my opinion. Now, the third stock we're going to be looking at is Shopify. So Shopify had a big, big, big sell-off in 2022, like many companies, but is now in a very, very healthy monthly uptrend. And Shopify is pulling the longer term, right? We had a bigger area of resistance right here. Now we broke out. We're looking to retest this area of support. Where is the support area? It's right around the $71, $70 range. Now we did cover earnings on the company after they reported earnings a few weeks ago, and I really loved what I saw in Shopify. The company's finally profitable. They're doing very good cost management. They're now free cash flow positive, low amount of debt, and extremely attractive growth metrics for the next three years. So I do believe Shopify is on its uh, redemption story, essentially. So I will be looking to make some aggressive plays down here, down into the $72, $71 area. Now, the stock is currently trading about $76.59, but Shopify usually has some decent uh, implied volatility. So we should be able to get a decent cushion uh, on these plays if we're looking to do so. So Shopify, the expected move is about $73.50. So that puts them right about here, this green line right here that I just drew, right? So we're going to be looking to play a little bit below that. So let's take a look at the premium together shall we? So how much can we get on Shopify looking towards the 71s? As you can see here, guys, half a percent rule, barely available at the 72s. At the 72s, you'd want to see about 36 cents. So I'm going to be looking for a dip on Shopify Monday or Tuesday. If we can pull down towards this expected move, talking about 75, $74 maybe, as close as possible as we can get to the expected move on Monday or Tuesday, I'll be looking to play maybe the 71s and $70. I'm going to be looking for the 70s or 71s, guys. We need to see about 35, 36 cents on the bid for those. I could go as high as 72s, but personally, I really want to play the 70s and 71s. It's really our lower end of this big, big, big support area and the previous resistance area as well. So that's going to be the Shopify play that I'm looking for this week. 70s and 71s need to see about 35 cents on the bid. Now, the last play we're going to be taking a look at, guys, is somewhat of a controversial one. It is Alibaba. So Alibaba, every now and then, I will make an exception to my rules. As you'll notice, Alibaba is in pretty much a monthly downtrend at this point. However, we are trading towards pretty much under the IPO prices all the way back to 2015, 2016 prices. Now, back then, Alibaba was making about $20 billion in revenue. As you can see currently in the most recent year that ended, guys, uh, they are making, you know, about $126, $130 billion. So the revenues have 6 x Their margins are fairly decent. Their free cash flow is amazing, but their share price is trading roughly the same. Alibaba, in my opinion, and I keep saying this on the channel, I've been saying it for a while, represents one of the best value opportunities of any growth stock in the entire market. They're only being held down because of the news of the Chinese economy being weaker than expected recently. But in terms of company specifics, there is nothing wrong with this company. Their free cash flow is insane. Their margins are great. Their buybacks are absolutely insane too. And the valuation is crushed, guys. They're trading at roughly about an eight, nine forward PE ratio, which is absolutely ridiculous for the amount of money that they're bringing in. So Baba, I will go against one of these, uh, one of my rules. However, feel free. If you don't like this trade, please just don't feel the need to take it whatsoever. I'm just showing what I'm looking to do for the upcoming week. Obviously, none of this is financial advice, but this is one of my personal trade ideas. So Baba, every time it comes down, guys, into this lower area of support, we're talking about $72, $71. I get extremely interested in Baba. So let's take a look at the expected move for Baba on the week together. 
And we will see here that the expected move is roughly about $72.16 to the downside, right around my juicy trading area. So if we can get below 72, maybe 71 or $7, let's say Baba has a little bit of a dip Monday or Tuesday down into 73, 72, may be able to unlock the 70 strike which is extremely juicy for Alibaba, in my opinion. If we take a look here, guys, at the uh, options, if we take a look here at the options chain, you'll see that $71, $70 is not yet offering enough premium. We want to see about $0.35, $0.36 cents on the bid for these. And so far, the only thing that's offering that is 72s. Now, 72s is a little bit close considering the expected move is 72.16. So I really want to be at the 70 or 71. So we really need a little bit of a dip on Alibaba. And then I will be going shopping for the 71s or 70s on Alibaba. Extremely juicy level, extremely undervalued stock in my opinion. Would not mind being assigned any shares of Alibaba at these lower levels, that's for sure. But if for every rich reason this play is a bit too risky for you guys, well, there are a few ones that are recurring plays on the channel, such as Caesars. Caesars is still within striking distance here of your $40 strike, right? That whole level we were looking at, the $40 strike, well, still available for this current week as well. Take a look at Caesars Entertainment. You'll see, right, less of a risky play than Alibaba, and you'll see that the 40.5s do have our half a percent rule. So if ever Caesars does have a little bit of a dip Monday and Tuesday, it'll free up once again the 40 and maybe in the 39.5s, which would be a very good trade. And the other one that I've been looking at, guys, is Pepsi. Pepsi now breaking through the 165. Our most recent area of support beyond that is about the 162.50. Pepsi in this level, in my opinion, guys, is an absolute no-brainer and you can see the 200 weekly moving average is right down here at about 162 so even pepsi would be a very decent play uh, if ever you want something more conservative and you don't like alibaba for potentially the exposure to the chinese markets or something like that pepsi representing a great deal the only problem is pepsi's a bit too far currently from the 162 fives to offer some good premium we need to see about 80 cents pepsi's not that volatile so that would probably only be freed up guys if pepsi really has a dip here into the 163s early on in the week i would have no problem doing the 162 fives so those are just a couple ideas uh, for you guys if ever you don't like baba and then lastly guys our last play is going to be a company that everybody knows Nike. So Nike has been struggling ever so slightly recently just because of the fact that consumers have less disposable income and obviously a large part of uh, Nike's market is the Chinese market and the Chinese consumers just haven't been doing too well. That being said, it has offered a tremendous discount in share price. You can see Nike usually in a glorious monthly uptrend. However, recently we've kind of been stuck in this monthly tightening range right now and has established a very nice area of support in the roughly $100 range so what i'm looking to do guys is play the bottom end of this yes i know it spiked down a few times last october and then october of 2022 but those were broad market sell-offs as a whole when the rest of the market is doing good you can see nike usually holds this 100 area of support pretty well that being said we're down to about 102 on Friday. So if Nike continues dipping here, we're going to take a look at the expected move and see where we can get. We want to try to get the 99s or the 98s, guys. I'll be very happy with those. Take a look. The expected move right now is about 99.64. So we want to be looking for the 99s or the 98s. Now, let's take a look at Nike's options chain together to see if they're available currently. Probably not. Nike still needs to dip a little bit. Yeah, you can see here the 99s and the 98s not offering enough premium, guys. Need to see about... 50 cents on the bid and so far it's only offering it for the 100 so nike you really need to see it come down a little bit on monday morning towards the 100 dollar uh strike price right and then it may free up the 99s or the 98s which, which is what we're looking at we're gonna look for about half a percent on those extremely juicy level for nike guys in my opinion no brainer the stock is currently still off the all-time highs uh by about you know 44 percent roughly valuation is decent and i am expecting them to recover later in the year so this is just a great time to be playing nike stock when it is currently low so with all those trades out of the way, guys, let me give you some bonus plays that I constantly have on a watch list because of where they are on a technical basis all around support prices. I'm not going to go through the expected moves and the, the which strikes we're doing that. That you guys can do on your own based off of the information I provided in this video right now. But here are a number of them, right? So OXY, always on my watch list, guys. It's 56 to $53 level right down here. You guys can see why huge area of support, right? And you'll see that most of these plays are similar. Number two is going to be Marathon Oil. Same thing. Energy play, decent current monthly uptrend, tightening range right now. 
consolidation right above our juicy area here. $22, $21 as soon as it comes down there, guys. I'm playing MRO. Number three is going to be Philip Morris. Philip Morris, same reason, guys. Every time it dips down to this 90 to roughly $87 range, look at the support we get from the bulls. So as long as Philip Morris trades down in this area, whenever I see a big red day on Philip Morris, like 2%, 1% to the downside, I'm looking for plays in this area because it's a big support zone. Now, the third play is going, the another play is going to be uh, Texas Instruments. So Texas Instruments, a bit of a no-brainer as well. You can see this red line right here. The $160 range, guys, 160 is so juicy for this stock. Take a look at how many times it plays a support. Yes, it's had a few dips here, 2022. Just like Nike, when broad markets are selling off, it trades down to the 145 level. But as a whole, guys, the 160 is extremely solid. Whenever I see it close to here, I look at the premiums to see if I maybe can't get 156, 155. Now, moving on to the next one is going to be Johnson & Johnson. So J&J, &J, same thing. Look at this support area, right? Previous resistance, new sound support, right? Never really cracking through here, except for that last year's uh, October sell-off. But for the most part, guys, tends to hold 158 down to about 151. So whenever Johnson & Johnson opens a week red, I'm always looking to make a play, guys, 158 or better, respecting my half a percent rule. So that's Johnson & Johnson. Another play is going to be ON Semiconductor. Very well-known semiconductor name has been hit recently because a lot of their business is uh, with OEM manufacturers, car manufacturers, because they supply semiconductors more specifically to EVs. That's a larger part of their business. Every time they dip down here, $70 down to about $60. I'm looking to play ON Semiconductor. Beautiful area of resistance. Use it as support. Just a big, big, big chop zone as a whole. And you can see support, support, support just continues to play out for the stock. So every time it opens down there, 1%, 2% on a Monday, I look to see if ON Semiconductor is within my striking range. Now, another play I always look out for, guys, is Tesla in this lower area. We said it earlier on the channel, 180 to 170 huge area of support for Tesla. Would not mind buying some Tesla shares down here. Every time it comes down there, guys, when we get down to about, you know, 187, 186, I always look for 175 down to 170 to see if I can get some premium down there. And uh, one of the last ones here, guys, is going to be Expedia. I loved, loved, loved their earnings. The only reason they have a 17% 17, 17 drop after earnings is because their CEO had an unexpected departure, not because anything's wrong with the business, just because he felt like his time at the company was pretty much done. But their financials, guys, are absolutely insane. And this is a classic breakout retest trade. Take a look. Range, right? Consolidation range for a better part of a year and a half. Breakout retest of this range so we want to be targeting as close as possible guys anything below 130 right 129 down to about 125 is what i'm going to be looking to play out for the next upcoming week so that is one that is constantly on my back burner if ever we have a nice little dip early on in the week i always check 130 129 128 contracts would not mind owning it down there so that's pretty much everything for today's video. Hope all of that was insightful. Hopefully it gave you guys a better look into how I choose my plays and how to shop for premium together. As you saw, it was extremely quick. And as uh, if you take a look, guys, at my um, my longer form video where I present this strategy, I'll link it down in the video description. I'll also leave it at the top uh, at the top right corner right now. It's a 30 minute video, roughly, where I break down in detail how I research these plays for the strategy. So if you haven't had a look at that, guys, definitely take a look at that. It will largely help you out uh, if you're looking to trade the put wheel strategy. So hopefully all of this was helpful, guys. If it was, consider dropping a like on the video. Would really appreciate it for the algorithm. Consider subscribing to the channel as well. We do these videos every single Sunday and we do our daily market recap videos Monday through Friday after the close. So take a look at those if you haven't. And as usual, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, please leave them down below in the comments. I would love to answer every single one of them. I usually get back to you guys within the first 24 hours. Anything you want, stocks, technical analysis, questions on my strategy, anything at all, leave it down below in the comments and I'll be happy to answer you. So take care, guys. I love you all and peace. I'll see you tomorrow.